Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here in the Home Weather Office for Wednesday, February the 21st, 2024. We do have a lot to talk about in today's video, including the chances for more big storm systems for the West, more heavy snow for the higher elevations, and of course, this is going to come with much colder temperatures, but also we could be dealing with a big, big system that could really explode in intensity for the Midwest and the Northern Plains by the early to middle of next week. So in today's video, we have a lot to digest. So first off, we're looking at the GFS model. We're going to kind of scramble things up a little bit today or shake things up, right? So this is the global forecasting system for this afternoon, and we can see that where it's snowing and where you have a few pop-up snow showers going on across the Intermountain West, also for the Cascades with some pop-up showers and thunderstorms still left behind of this cold air mass that has been over us for a few days already. Can't, I can't believe it's been that long. So it's out of here by the time we go into tomorrow, but simultaneously, once that leaves, we're going to have a little bit of a low pressure system developing across the northern portion or, well, more of the Midwest into the uh, upper Midwest, such as Indiana, the Ohio Valley, as well as Indiana. There is the potential for some large hailstones with this. So there is some severe weather anticipated with this weather disturbance, but nothing too extreme. We're not talking about a big tornado threat. We're not talking about a big wind damage threat. Maybe at most we do see a 5% risk for damaging, or a, yeah, a 5% that is, but we're not going to see a slight risk. I just don't think it's going to happen. This is going to be a very low end, quick threat of any severe weather, and it's going to come overnight, late tonight, all the way into early tomorrow morning. And once that system gets into the northeast, it's going to be bringing a little bit of rainfall, limited snowfall with this one. Everyone was worried about this one being a nor'easter nearly a week ago. But we can clearly see how things have changed over the course of about, say, four to six days when looking at the global um, computer models. And so what we're seeing here now is just a quick mover snowstorm. Nothing going to be, uh, no concern for any big accumulation, maybe about a few inches. And that's all you're going to see with this snowstorm. And then it's back to the races with quieter weather other than maybe a little short wave perturbation over portions of Kentucky that might bring a little bit more snowfall but otherwise pretty quiet overall and that's how it's going to unfortunately stay until we get into early next week is when things could get very interesting so yeah I'm smiling about this one because it's going to be a, an abrupt change in the weather pattern so as you know uh watch out if you're in the Pacific Northwest for uh, next weekend, this is for February the 25th, 2024, in the overnight hours, we'll be talking about a big, massive snowstorm, big time winds, big time snow for the higher elevations, much colder temperatures, and look at that gradient. That is very tight, and that's why this system is going to be pretty intense, very impactful. Once it gets into the Intermountain West there of, say, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Montana, this is for Monday next week. And then once this gets into the plains, yeah, we might have to watch for a better chances of severe weather, especially over here where we do get enough warm air advection, enough forcing along that uh, warm sector environment that is draped over here. That could really uh, cause some concerns for severe weather, more probably in the marginal to slight risk category. And then once we go into the middle of next week, this is for Wednesday, February the 28th, the second to last day of February. Yeah, we could be dealing with a much more impactful system with colder air in the wake of that as this slides uh, eastward with time. And then we might see more snow. But of course, uh, there's a lot of changes to be ironed out on the uh, GFS model. You can see the 06Z run, nothing there. And when we look at the 0Z, a whole different story. So each model here has different outcomes. So we don't know exactly if this is even going to happen in the first place. But watch out, folks, for the early part of next week, at least in the, the the Pacific Northwest and into the Northern Plains, we might see some active weather as well as some much colder temperatures. So now looking at the GEFS ensemble forecast, is look at the precipitation outlook. 
I'm not using the deterministic because the GFS can be more variable from run to run. And so, in fact, we're going to just be looking at the blend of 30 different members, actually 31, because including the control run, we're looking at anywhere between about uh, an inch to maybe a couple of inches of additional rainfall to come over Indiana and the Ohio area over the next 10 days. So this is through the 2nd of March. We are looking at anywhere between about an inch to maybe an inch and a half for the northeast, as well as some decent rainfall for the Pacific Northwest, including for Oregon and Washington. By the way, for the Sierras, we could be looking at about an inch and a half to maybe a couple of inches there in the form of snow, more than likely. As a matter of fact, when we do take a look at that snowfall amount over the 10-day period, yeah, big time snow over the mountains here of the Sierra, maybe a couple of feet on the ensemble. That is a strong signal, folks, from the GEFS, the Global Ensemble Forecasting System, the American model, and then, of course, the higher elevations here. Even some of the valleys could get quite a bit of snowfall, including the northern Cascades there, could end up getting five plus feet of snowfall. That is a big time signal that a lot of us look at as far as um, model agreement from, uh, from run to run. Not much going on here over the northern plains of the United States, so below average snowfall unfortunately will prevail because your temperatures are going to be above average, and I'm talking seriously above average. So when looking at the temperature anomaly map here, this is the entire North America, this is Canada, Hudson Bay, you get your bearings, right? This is where we all live, including people in Canada. As you all can see, the red and orange shading is above average temperatures, and this is over the next five days. So this is a five-day temperature anomaly average, also on the ensemble from the Euro. So this is 51 model members making an average up. So this is basically kind of the, the most accurate scenario, not the most accurate, every model has its errors and has its issues, but we have a pretty good idea that the Midwest and the Northern Plains will have a very warm period coming up here by the end of this week into the weekend, so you don't need to worry about wearing jackets, get the tank tops out, get the shorts out, because it's going to be a warm one. For the Midwest here, over the next two to seven days uh, through the middle of next week, very warm. And I mean, there's just no cooler weather arriving at all. Maybe a cold shot here and there, but when you blend it over the next seven-day average, it's going to come to being above normal. So there's no cold air. It's all locked up here in uh, Western Canada into northern Canada as well as Alaska. And in fact, Alaska could see some all-time record low temperatures to end out or to even begin early March. So that is something that we here will have to watch because where it's cold there and with a positive or with a negative um, AO coming up by early March potentially and where it lands is going to be important because that means now all this colder air is going to want to escape southward. In this case, it's going to be over the western U.S. And you can see California here looking at below average temperatures. Pretty significant, in fact. Some of the models from the GFS, the Canadian, want temperatures as much as 15 to 30 degrees below average for early March. That is phenomenal for climatology standards for the West, at least for my area. We could have upper 40s during the day, even some mid 40s. You don't see that very often for early March where we should be in the mid 60s this time of the year. So yeah, I mean, it, it could be pretty substantial. Something that we have not experienced yet thus far. By the time we go into the first full week of March, very warm for the Midwest, for the Great Lakes, even for portions of Canada. I'm sorry, folks, for a lot of you that want the colder air, you're not getting it. And it's all because of that El Nino. And, you know, if you watch my winter forecast from, say, in November, I kind of alluded to this, that there's not going to be a whole, lot of, a whole lot of cold Arctic outbreaks other than the mid-January one. Overall, it just hasn't been a cold one in the long-term average. In fact, if we look at our CDAAS temperatures in the last 90 days, you can clearly see there's no blue here. It's all above average in a 90-day average. This is a three-month mean average 
all the way back from, uh, let's see, this is February, January, all the way from early December, mid-December perhaps, mid-January, mid-February. Actually, no, this is from mid-November. Sorry about that. I My brain is all over, you know? But you get the idea. From mid-November through now mid-February, it's this period has been really warmer than normal. Just no Arctic air masses. And I don't see that changing. I really don't. It's going to be a warm one. The reason why is because of the pattern that we're entering. So if we go forward here on the European Ensemble forecast, yes, you got troughs, right? This is why you're going to see some, at least some cooling early on in this forecast period through the early part of the weekend. But key, watch this little bit of ridging here in the Pacific Northwest. Watch what happens. That is going to skip along and it's going to build over here in the eastern U.S. as well as the and the Great Lakes region, Hudson Bay. What this is going to induce is southwesterly flow. So this is what we call ascending flow. And I'll probably make a tutorial on this, why this is important. Because despite lower heights, you're going to have ascending flow southwesterly in the deep layer. That's going to affect warmer air northward around this ridge of high pressure. So when we go forward in time, we can see where that ridge is going to build into the northeastern U.S. anomalously strong. And then look what happens. Goodbye, trough in the east. Welcome the ridge. Yeah, it's going to be a warm one to be in early March here. And in fact, if we look at the GEFS ensemble, also a stronger signal for the west to have well below average heights very far below average temperatures, so we're not going into spring just yet here for California, for the Pacific Northwest, including for Oregon, Washington, while the Great Lakes will be in some warm weather. Me and Saints Angel, Saints Angel, uh, welcome by the way, um, I'm glad you like my content, um, you're awesome, and she was telling me last night, I don't want the cold, David, I love the warm weather, we need the warm weather so bad. So, well, you're getting your wish. You're getting your wish. Above average temperatures will prevail for the extended period, perhaps. And that is no surprise. By looking at uh, Radar Omega here, our temperature anomaly forecast, we can see that look at all of the red here, especially southeastern Michigan. You have an 80 to 90% chance of seeing above average temperatures. So that means there's no cold air coming. Forget about it. And for the Deep South, as well as, I mean, virtually the entire region east of the Rockies will have above normal temperatures. Spring, if not summer-like temperatures down here in Texas, which, by the way, some areas could reach the low 90s in western Texas today because of that dry line. Because of the drier air, heats up faster than moist air. So you're going to really get the temperatures very warm out here with dew points in the single digits extreme or critical fire danger perhaps even extreme at times in certain areas so that's not good and with these warm temperatures continuing it's just going to make things even drier while the west here has below average temperatures and this continues all the way through the next 8 to 14 days really virtually no change there's just no change warm and dry or getting drier for the east Wetter and cooler for the West, as you can see, with the green colors, the green anomalies indicating cold and wet conditions will likely prevail through the next 14 days, according to the Climate Prediction Center. Now, before I do end the video, I have four important announcements to share with you, and the most important one is that a total solar eclipse will be happening on Monday, April the 8th, 2024, at approximately 12 15 p.m central daylight time where i'm going to be at least for your localized area it's going to be a little different because anywhere along this path the shadow moves across the united states at different times so therefore it's 12 15 for me but if you are in say buffalo it's going to be a little later but either way i am driving to frederick fredericksburg in texas on april the 4th and I will be there in time to see the total solar eclipse on April the 8th. And then I'll be driving back home from that. So I am so excited. I will be live streaming this. I am going to be using my drone to see this from the air. It is going to be a spectacular show that 
no one has seen yet since August 21st of 2017. And so I am very blessed and happy that I am going to be bringing you guys this live. I'll probably be live streaming my road trip to Texas as well, depending on how things go. Let me know in the comments if you want me to live stream my road trip to Texas on Thursday through at least on Saturday. The second announcement is that my first Atlantic Hurricane Seasonal Outlook will be released on April the 15th, which is a Monday, at 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Different time zones mean different times, so if you're in Central Daylight Time, it's going to be at 4 p.m., and if you're in Eastern Daylight Time, it will be released at 5 p.m. And then I'll have another one for May 1st, and then May 28th with the following times on that release as well. And then my first routine tropical weather outlook will begin on June the 1st, as I stated in my previous videos, and will run through November 1st, because this season is expected to be extremely active. There are all indications of that. More on that when I do release my seasonal outlook, which doesn't look very good at all. This includes rapid updates and live streams on tropical systems as well as they are happening near shore like I did last year. Then uh, thirdly, if you all want to join the Weather Force Discord server today, there is a link in the description below this video. Hey, Saints Angel there. Uh, I've, she's awesome. She is awesome, you guys. Got to meet her. Um, Butter Dog is in there. Weather Republic. Sunny is in there. Uh, Diana, uh, KORF, Lucky. Um, we got many people. We got Fire Ant in there. Some good people to meet that you all don't want to miss. Um, great server. I highly encourage you all to join it today. And then lastly, you could follow me on Twitter for latest updates. Link in description. It's actually called X, but I like sticking to the old school of Twitter. And so uh, there's a link in the description below this video if you all want to follow me there on Twitter for latest updates. Because yeah, there is more action coming to California by the early to the middle of next week. Colder, windier, and stormier. So I'll probably be more active on Twitter yet again because of this and, of course, for hurricane season. But anyways, you all, thank you all for tuning in to today's detailed weather forecast. As always, have a great rest of your Wednesday, February the 21st, and I'll see you back here tomorrow.